Good afternoon friends. So far we have seen three different ways of loading data from your staging to production uh, incrementally in your data warehousing uh, solutions with the help of SSIS. So we have seen the change tracking mechanism, the CDC and the simple join uh, approach in, uh, with the help of SSIS to load your data incrementally and on, uh, so that the only changed records which have been inserted or updated are only impacted. The other very efficient way would be data hashing. So in this blog we would learn how to use data hashing to, uh, to capture the new records and also the updated ones and then uh, apply them through onto the production server of, of your database. Now to give you a brief introduction about hashing uh, SQL Server uh, has a function hash bytes. So what this function does is it accepts an, uh, an algorithm uh, and uh, the string and, and then hashes the data on the basis of the algorithm. So if we use SHA-256, uh, it, uh, it generates a hash bytes of 32 bit for any string that is passed on. Now what do I mean by that? So if this is a garbage string that we, we can call it and then we apply the hash bytes of for SHA-2256 algo we see that it generates a hash code of 32 bit now for any any and every record uh, we can use this approach to generate a unique and this is very data sense sensitive so uh, the code that is being generated is very sensitive and it, it reflects any change of uh, if there is an update so what we are trying to uh, do is leverage this feature of SQL Server and identify the updated records from a table uh, and also the newly inserted ones now let's see how we utilize this hash bytes to uh, deliver our incremental data load to do so I have created two uh, databases uh, which is exclusively for this demonstration uh, we call it staging source and a production target each of them have nothing but a simple table uh, so hash source is uh, we can consider it as a staging table which uh, is having uh, four records and it has an ID primary key and the hash destination has again two records now if we look at it let's also try to so these are the two tables that I have uh, in place now what these tables look like are pretty similar both of them have a primary key on the ID and uh, the source table can be considered a staging box and this is our production ultimate table on which we want to apply the changes so considering that this is your production records you have uh, two records the contact and the addresses and this is uh, the current staging uh, records that it look, looks like so looking at, uh, at, at this uh, demo what we find is there are two new records that need to be inserted and also we find that the record ID 2 needs to be updated for the contact and the address so there has been a change so we have an update and then we have uh, two, uh, two inserts so overall what we can see is we have three records which needs to be identified and then pushed uh, across from the staging to the production target with the help of uh, hash bytes. Now let's take a look what we have for the SSIS. So in the SSIS I have created two uh, you can see connections uh, the first of the, the first is the production this is points to the production target uh, database and then we have the source which is the staging uh, now I have create I have simply uh, one data flow task to do all this all this for us so this data flow task has some sources now let's take a look uh, closer look at these uh, tasks that we have in our data flow so first of all we have a oily DB staging source what this has is a simple query it query it queries out your ID your name contact addresses and it's trying to generate a hash uh, taking a look what we have for this query is see you can see that from the hash source what we what we are trying to fetch is the ID name contact and addresses that is all the columns and what we are trying to do is we are trying to 
hash byte generate a hash byte for each of uh, the ID the name the contact and the address so for all of them what we are trying to do is generate a hash byte and then it will it will generate one hash code for for each of the records so if we see if we run this query what this is our source right so let's run this against our staging source now what we find here is each of them have, uh, have one one unique hash uh, code being var binary code which is being generated against each of them so this is actually uh, for all of uh, for each of the records so what we again what we what we have done is we have casted everything to uh, a var char type that is for the id we have casted that to a var char next what we move on is is for the name uh, and also for the contact and the address and then we generate a hash code that's all so we have we have done that next that's your first source now let's uh, also i would like to uh, show that since i'm since i'm using a merge join and we need to sort it out so to do away with that what i have done is i have set the is sorted uh, property to true and i have and you need to use the hash column and and set that sort key position to one that means we we have sorted the the data on the basis of the hash uh, column so this, this just remember this thing next is the prod target so this is pointing to the prod and then again we are simply trying to fetch the hash code for the uh, prod now what we are trying to do is we are not trying to fetch all the columns we are just trying to fetch here the id and against the the id the hash hash code that's all so if we run this uh, we get the id and the respective hash codes so that's for your production uh, production data Next, we are trying to use the merge join, and on the merge join, we are using the left outer join to identify the inserted and the uh, updated records. So, what we are trying to do is we are trying to join on the hash uh, code and fetch the data records. So, that's your left outer join on the hash hash code. So, join key is your hash codes that you have generated. Now, what this would look like in the form of a query is let me show you so if this is the this is the source query this is your production query and then we are joining it on the hash code and then we are using a split conditional split for is null so if you see here we have used a conditional split for hash destination code to be null so if you look here what this gives you is those records which needs to be either inserted or updated i hope this is pretty similar simple so this gives you the records which if you, if you look at the the data here we have three records actually right so we have this record which needs to be we have this record which needs to be updated and these records to be inserted so likewise this this uh, complete transformation here would give you these three records so out of these three records you just need to identify which one is to be updated and which one is to be inserted now as we move on out of these result set the result set that we have here from this result set we are trying to look up against the production version so if you see we are trying to look up against the production data for the id column that's all we are simply selecting the id primary key column and then we are joining that against that's all we're just looking that up so once this is done just simply try to understand from the ids which are already existing those need uh, needs to be i mean the matched ones would would need to be updated and those which are not there are, there are no matches would need to be inserted that's all so here again oledb command what we are trying to do is for all those which are matched for the ids like here what you would see is id2 would be matched so id2 would need to be updated but for id3 and 4 there would be a no match that means these these would be inserted 
So for no matched outputs, we would be inserting the records fair and square. It's very simple. Sim simple. So we would be inserting the ID, name, contact and addresses simply pushing that in. Now for the updates what we are trying to do is we are we have we are using the ID and based on that we are updating the name contact and addresses based upon the parameters. So these this is again a very simple transformation that we have done. Now that's all. Now if we look at we are all set to run. I have given the explanation for everything now. This is your current state. Now let's try to run this. So this is a very simple way to identify, you know, after this from this conditional split, what we get is uh, those records which needs to be incrementally dealt with. So what we find is the insert and the updates only. So as you can see, there are four records in the source, two records in the production, merge join and then the conditional split allows you only three records. The lookup again has one update and two inserts. Very simple. So that's, that's hashing for you in a very simple demonstration. So now if you take a look, the data has been merged, the update has been done and the inserts have also been done. So so that is a very simple way friends to identify your uh, your uh, data which has changed over a period of time and incrementally updating or you know uh, inserting them accordingly i hope this will be really beneficial to you and uh, keep looking out for more blogs from me thank you friends